played one of these in a while, so I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Anyway, the reason I wanted to talk to you is because I have sold three guitars. Uh, I met this guy on his work break, and he bought an electric guitar from me. Calls me up two weeks later, wants to buy two more that I've just listed. I'm sure, I'm, I like repeat customers, so I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll meet you. We met again, he bought two more. And I got curious and I said to him, um, so are you just trying out different brands? Are you a collector? Are you a player? Do you play out? Comes to Come to find out that this guy has over a hundred guitars. Uh, he just likes buying guitars. He's just an amateur player, but he, his house must be absolutely covered uh, in guitars. Um, and I said, well, do you, do you, do you try them and flip them? Oh no, I've never sold one. I've never sold a guitar that I've bought. So everything that he buys to try out, and he did buy some budget brand stuff from me, he just keeps, you know, I'm not sure of his financial situation. Most people, you know, can only keep so many and, you know, have to sell to buy kind of thing. Um, but obviously he's at the point where, you know, he, he has some expendable income and he spends some on guitars and he likes noodling and fixing and playing around with them and he just keeps them and he has a house full of them. Um, a bit like the Scott Grove videos. If you've ever watched Scott Grove uh, videos, it's just amazing how many guitars he has hanging on the, in, in the what looks to be um, a barn type building that he's in. I imagine he's got hundreds, but I know he sells them. Uh, he keeps them, sells them, um, he customs them out and often sells them. So he's a flipper of sorts. Um, and then, then of course, uh, people like Guitar Max. I've noticed he's got quite a few rows of them. I'm not sure if he buys to sell uh, or, or whatever, but he buys a lot of guitars. He does a lot of reviews. Um, his channel's really good. I think he, he does a good job, particularly with uh, electric guitars. Uh, and he has a high volume coming in, but it seems that um, he cycles some of them out, as do a lot of other YouTubers as well. I've noticed, um, I know that Phil McKnight and Daryl Braun and all those guys, um, probably even China Guitar Skeptic and, and uh, others, uh, Will's Crazy Guitar, whatever his name is, they don't seem to keep everything that they show on their channel. They have, um, some of them do giveaways on their Patreon channels, some of them sell, um, some of them donate and probably take, you know, a tax deduction or something. I don't know. Um, however, my, the whole point of this video is guitar hoarding. Now, I know that the show Hoarders was quite popular on um, networks for a while. I don't know what network, but I remember seeing a bit of the one of the episodes, which was horrific to me, what people were keeping in their house um, to the point of being unhygienic and a health hazard on some of the episodes. But then I thought there were probably classified, bona fide hoarders in the guitar world um, or instrument world in general. I remember one, th uh, one, one time, a long time ago, I ran into one. I was in a little town somewhere, I think where one of the towns my parents lived in, and I was wandering around, and I found this old-timey music shop with all these really interesting um, guitars and mandolins hanging in the window. And I went in and I went through rows and rows and rows of disheveled, old, musty guitar cases and instruments in various conditions. And at the back of the shop, there's this guy, and it looked like no one ever came into his shop because when I walked up to him, he was thrilled to give me like this one hour tour. Uh, of his place. There's all kinds of interesting stuff. He had cellos, he had guitars, he had violins, he had dulcimers. He had all kinds of stuff. Uh, old horns, um, woodwinds, brass, you name it. He had stuff and he had vintage stuff and he had broken stuff that needed fixing up or, or restoration. And he was going to get to it, but he was never going to get to all of it type of thing. So I tried to, I told him what I do and I said, look, you know, how about, you know, do you want to sell 
you know, some bulk stuff and just get it out of here. Create some room because he was complaining out the room. And he said, sure. He says, um, just walk through and tell me what you're interested in. And I spent about an hour pulling out instruments and showing them to him and sort of telling him, you know, what I would have to do, what I'd be willing to pay. And I didn't buy a single thing. Not because I lowballed him, not because he didn't like the price, but because when he actually thought about it, and he thought hard in some cases, he couldn't bring himself to get rid of anything. Not even the cheapest ukulele in the shop, not even the most disheveled guitar in the shop, not even the most challenged, um, cracked, you know, damaged half a guitar lying in a corner, um, he found an excuse not to sell it every time. It's, it's, you know, you've seen the show American Pickers, right? When they go to people's barns and look through stuff and you find these crusty old guys that they don't want to let stuff go, even though it's just rutting in a barn covered in cobwebs. When somebody actually tries to buy it, they don't want to, they just don't want to let it go. Um, and I worked with this guy for an hour and I just remember I couldn't get a single thing off of him. Finally, I said, let's stop. It's clear to me that you are attached, emotionally attached to all of these things and you don't want to sell anything. So, you know, thanks for the, the afternoon. I'll, I'll just mentally treat it like I went to a museum and looked at all kinds of interesting stuff. But, um, you know, I can't take any more of you dangling stuff in front of me, telling me to make you an offer and then, you know, never ever wanting to sell anything. It was, um, it was a... It was a very, very uh, testing and uh, annoying <laughs> afternoon, but it was also fun because I saw lots of things that I haven't seen uh, uh, in a long time or ever. Uh, you know, some old American made instruments that, you know, he'd got a hold of years and years ago and just never got around to fixing up or, or restoring. And, it, you know, I realized as I walked out of that shop, I just ran into a hoarder. I just ran into a hoarder. He has nominally a shop, but he never sells anything. No one can buy anything from him. He surrounds himself with instruments. They give him comfort. comfort. He has an emotional attachment to them. The thought of parting with any of them is a source of great anxiety or pain. And, you know, I've run into people along the way selling instruments over the last few years that are sort of similar, you know, um, you get into a conversation with them, you find out they have literally dozens or hundreds of instruments and they keep everything that they buy and they just keep buying and buying and buying. And, you know, not, not only do they have to have a Strat, a Tele, a Les Paul shaped, um, you know, one of everything, pretty soon they have to have one of every color. So it's like, oh, I don't have a green one. I, I need a green one. Um, and, you know, you could say that some of us Collectors or hoarders have a problem, have an issue, uh, need therapy, need counseling or something. I'm sure that there is some psychologi deep psychological seated issues uh, in the guitar world. Um, so I wonder if there are any hoarders or collectors out there in my listenership. Um, you know, jot your experience down. Why do you buy guitars? If you don't play them, what do you do, what do, you do with them? Um, why do you keep them all? Where do you keep them all? Um, what are you going to do when you die with all those? Uh, I've got a room full here. I've got all mine in a room. I couldn't imagine having a whole house full. Um, you know, obviously you can't take them with you, um, whatever you believe in the afterlife. Um, and they're going to be parceled off or, or auctioned off at some point if your relatives aren't musicians. So it's just interesting the mentality behind endless acquisitions and, and collecting. People use the, the acronym GAS or, or Guitar Acquisition Syndrome. It, it's sort of like you need this fresh injection. You need this new instrument. And I know what it feels like because I get it too, but I also force myself to get rid of uh, um, guitars. And I have a rule that if I keep a guitar, something's got to go to make way for it. I can't expand beyond, beyond one room is my, uh, the way that I deal with it. And I'm wondering how you deal with it, you folks out there. Um, and I met a lot of guitar players too that sell everything. Um, they think they want it, they buy it, and they decide to move it on. It's not quite what, 
what they want or they tire of it or they find something better and they see guitars as purely inanimate objects, tools to be used. They don't have these um, sort of um, cloying emotional relationships with their instruments. Uh, and then, then, then you get the guys that do. So which are you? You tell me. See you next time.